Right, this is the the front deck, the well of the boat. This is the cat's domain where he sits and eats and lords it over everything. He keeps us relatively mink free and he lets us know by demanding food all the while. Obviously there's bits and bobs on the front deck that wouldn't normally be there one when we're cruising. Right, let's take a look at the uh, inside of the boat. These here are the entrance doors coming into the actual boat itself. A couple of steps down. And there's Sandy. Hello love. Hello. Hello Mum, hello Dad. Um, the first thing that you probably notice, as everybody else does when they come on this boat, is the interior. Uh, she's lined out entirely in solid mahogany. We understand that this is reclaimed mahogany from an old sailing ship. She's very, very beautiful, but she is extremely hard work because all this wood has to be washed down and waxed several times a year. There's also rather a lot of brass. All the portholes, both inside and out, are, are brass, and they're lined with brass. The um, porthole glass is very thick. It's etched as well, which means it's, it's cut into quite deeply, and the glass in these is thick. A um, little bit about the boat. She's what's known as a Stowhill tug. She was built by Pete and Julie Hill, who are one of the best boat builders around. Um, the idea was that uh, they built this boat, which was five years in the building, and they were going to retire and hand the business over to their two sons. Unfortunately for them, but fortunately for everybody else, uh, within four months of them being on the waters and sailing away, so many people were just absolutely knocked out by Hannah that uh, they also wanted boats like this and their order books were then full for several years ahead, which forced them out of retirement. Even today, if you want a Stowhill boat, you'll have to wait between three and five years for one, uh, because they do take a long time to build. They are bespoke boats, which means that they're all hand-built, nothing, nothing is done in a factory, and they are extremely special, very sought after and very expensive. If you wanted one like this today, you'd easily pay over £100,000. People always ask, is it cold living on a boat? And we always say, yes, it's absolutely freezing, especially when you forget to turn the central heating on. This boat has full central heating and all the radiators are hidden behind the mahogany panels at the bottom. There's a gap underneath and the heat comes out there and out the top. In actual fact, it gets too hot on the boat, so we tend not to use the central heating. We do have two stoves, one in this part of the boat, which you would call a lounge or a living room, which on a boat is called a saloon, and one down in the boatman's, which you'll see later, that's like a range cooker. The stove's what's known as a little wenlock. Uh, they still make them today exactly as they did over a hundred years ago. You can put anything in them and there's always plenty of wood lying along the river banks that you can take and dry out, but we tend to use uh, smokeless solid fuel. Um, the boat's extremely well fitted, all the, the stools that you see and the settee area all has storage space underneath um, and we tend to make good use of this. We weren't sure what to do with the interior of the boat, but in lots of ways the style, with her being a tug style and in the Dutch style, that kind of dictated it. The uh, curtains on the boat are all Dutch Van Dyke lace, which is incredibly expensive and we cannot get in this country. So if we want to replace the curtains at any time, it means a trip to Holland, I think, and um, an extremely large loan from the bank. They're all lined with uh, a very dark blue, um, the Dutch Delft blue, 
um, and they're overlaid. It's always a bit of a problem deciding what to have by way of decoration in a boat, that is your ornaments and your knickknacks. And we kept it in the Dutch style, um, the Dutch oven close links with the Asian countries. Uh, so a lot of the stuff is oriental or Dutch and it's all in blue. Um, quite a nice little collection. All the crystal that I have is all waterford uh, and it's it's very pretty, especially in the lamplight and uh, or when the sun's in the right position and you get a dappling effect. It's a bit dull today, a bit grey, overcast, so perhaps we might do a bit of this later on. Hello, we're in the galley now, which is, I suppose, the kitchen. The one thing I really hate about Hannah is the size of the galley. And um, he's, he's, he's almost getting the grease off the dishes now. Uh, we put in a microwave, we sacrifice some space because this is extremely useful on a boat. It is a straightforward 240 volt one, but you do get 12 volt ones. Almost everything else we've got that's electrical is dual voltage. Uh, we just haven't got round to getting a dual voltage one yet um, because, as I say, when we're out we tend to eat out all the time. Um, spatchcock chicken for lunch today, which I'm just about to put into the oven now. It's a split level hob, it's got four burners, it's gas, calor gas, with a grill and an oven. This will probably be our next major purchase as a new cooker because I haven't really got to grips with the controls on this one. It may well be because I'm not used to cooking by gas and um, we'll probably switch it for a diesel one which is a lot cheaper. Anyway, I'm going to pop this uh, chicken into the oven now. Uh, probably by getting another cooker as well, I'll do away with the separate grill compartment. We, we do struggle to get a large turkey in, we can get a 15-16 pounds one in, but uh, knowing Ian's appetite, we usually need one much bigger. Uh, just moving around now, it's a split level Frankie sink, uh, small bowl but big enough for what we need and the drainer which is very useful for washing veg and things at. I don't particularly like the tap, it's gold plated but it would be much more useful if it was a high neck. Uh, there are 12 volt sockets here as well so you can plug 12 volt appliances in, lamps etc. Ian's bowl of rotting bananas, he's very partial to bananas but um, tends to let them rot in the bowl for some reason. Uh, again all the um, uh, crockery is blue and white. Um, this all lights up underneath and I've got a dinner service up here and this all lights up as well. You have special catches on everything in boats so that if you do take a knock then they close. You'll notice a gap in them. The gap closes up, it depends on the humidity at the time and everything's designed to contract and expand. It's very good, it's a problem on some boats but this one is very well done. It's not glass that you see anywhere, it's um, a type of unbreakable stuff, a bit like Perspex. Lots of useful little drawers which um, Ian seems to think are an extension to his toolkit. Uh, all the cupboards, which I don't think I'm going to open, have lights inside so that um, when you're looking for something you can find it easily. Nice tiled worktops. Ian doesn't like these, I do, but as he doesn't do any of the cooking then that's uh, not down to him. Nice spice rack with a galley rail to keep everything in place. Um, to see all mahogany. The cupboard here is um, full of Waterford crystal and a lot of junk as well but uh, again the special catches so if you do happen to take a bump in a lock and uh, I see Ian's um, tankard has found its way in here puts that to extremely good use and then this is just a glory hole really it's where I keep all the little bits and pieces that I want kept to hand um, and never only really get around to putting away 
There is a drinks shelf here, quite a collection of alcohol. Um, and I noticed that the litre bottle of OVD that Cathy and Dougie are friends bought, Ian is missing. He's either drunk it or he's put it someplace else to stop me drinking it, but I'm not sure which. So it's a galley fridge here. Um, full size fridge. It's a 12 volt fridge, which means that uh, you, you never have to worry about uh, having a landline. That's normal electricity. It runs off of the ship's engine, boat's engine or the boat's batteries. Um, and it's all integral on the side. Um, missed my dishwasher a bit, missed the space, um, but unfortunately you can't have everything on boats. So that's the galley. Lighting, halogen lighting, uh, which gives very good light at night, and um, the inevitable plants, which are everywhere. Uh, I think next we're going to move down to what's known as the state room, bedroom to anybody else. We're moving down into what's known as the state room now, what you would call the main bedroom. Uh, as you can probably see, there's lighting under all the gunnels. Gunwares is the proper name, but it's pronounced gunnels. And this gives a nice uh, soft effect in the evening. The uh, bed is actually a standard double bed. I think it's actually two inches short of a double, but slightly longer. With it being against a wall, it makes it extremely difficult to make. It's one of the tasks that is difficult on your own. Uh, the, the bed is in a four-poster style with uh, lace curtains all around it. Um, it has a sound system built into the um, underneath that cupboard above the headboard, uh, which is quite useful if you want to listen to the radio or a bit of music in bed. Um, Again, the, the curtains are the same throughout, the uh, Van Dyke lace, Dutch lace. A couple of pictures on the wall of the boat uh, when she was first built. Um, lots of storage space under the bed and in the corner here, this is what you would call an airing cupboard. Um, we have underneath here a calorifier which is the equivalent of an immersion tank, built in double wardrobe and shelves and they're all lit inside and again the fittings inside are all mahogany. Everything is mahogany. We have in the ceiling, but the cover's on at the moment, which, what's known as a pigeon box. This opens on hinges at either side um, and you can take it off in the summer. There are a couple of screens go over that. Uh, one that you can just put across just to keep out insects and another one to keep out the light if you want it completely off. It can, if you're out cruising, if you get moored up on open water in the middle of summer, get extremely hot. So you want as much ventilation as possible. And perhaps uh, later on in the video you'll see the outside of this box. Again, it's got the little edged panels. And when the cover's off, it's all painted with roses and castles. Very pretty. I'm just going to take you back up into the galley, uh, just to show you the inside of my galley doors, which are roses and castles painted. Um, we do have a panel that fits into the galley, and uh, I think um, you may be able to see them. I'm not sure how good the lighting is. This is one of the panels now, the traditional roses and castles and the painted flowers if I just angle it towards the light. And uh, this is an old traditional skill. Um, the story goes that uh, the women on the boats originally stayed at home when the men were working the boats and uh, they worked in a lot of the pottery factories painting these uh, fantasy castles and things onto pottery. Um, and then uh, later on, um, when uh, things got hard, the women had to go to the boats. They had to go and help on the boats. Women usually steered the boats. 
and uh, they wanted to prettify the area they lived in, so this is what they did. Of course, originally, all what you've seen so far, people wouldn't have lived on this, and it wouldn't have been closed in, it would just have canvas covers, and the whole boat would be used for carrying, apart from the boatman's cabin at the end, which we'll see later. And uh, these are extremely beautiful. I think we'll have a quick look at the bathroom now. Moving into the bathroom now, and uh, you'll see that all the fittings uh, are matching and gold plated. Uh, one of the things people always seem to think uh, that when you live on a boat is when you use the toilet that it goes straight into the river or the canal. This isn't true. A lot of people have cassette toilets which is like what you see in caravans that have to be emptied. What we've actually got is a flushing toilet. It doesn't flush into the water. It goes into a 150 gallon storage tank and nice little touch finished with mother of pearl heads. It's electricity is all 12 volt um, and a nice cupboard under the vanity unit which is absolutely jam packed with uh, junk. Um, the pictures on the walls are just pictures of gardens, didn't really know what else to put there. Uh, as Ian turns round you'll see the bath, it's, it's what's known as a hip bath, it has a seat to tie the end and you can sit on it and wash yourself, fill it up quite deeply if you want to. Um, and uh, a shower above which is quite powerful. Uh, we have um, different ways of heating the water. It can You have no end of hot water, scalding hot water when your engine's running or uh, it can be heated by an immersion heater. The uh, panels, the tiles on the wall are hand painted Dutch tiles making up a little panel. Quite pretty. The towels were a wedding present from Ian's sister and uh, she embroidered them all. She's put Hannah on them and for some reason a sailing boat. I did sort of tactfully ask her about that and she says well she couldn't find a narrow boat so in a sailing boat was easier. But there right Mado. Um, I think this bit will be more interesting to you really than anybody else. But this part of the boat we're going into now is the engine room. The engine has its own room because it's a fairly big beast. As I've said the boat's a tug. It would have been used in its working days for pulling another unpowered boat behind it. For this reason there's what's called a Beta BD3 tug engine fitted. It's massive in as much as although it's only a three cylinder and when it's running fires every other lamp post. It produces 1.1 litres per cylinder. and that equates to 44 brake horsepower at a little over 1200 revs. This is the control panel switches for navigation lights macerator pump Unfortunately the engine room is used as a little bit of a cloak room, obviously we're a bit tight on space. But when we're out cruising all this lot disappears. The engine brasses get shined up. And the doors get opened so that everybody can see it. This part of the boat is all original. 
and in its working days this engine room and the boatman's cabin which we will see next would have been all there was for a family of four or more to live in all the rest of the boat that we've been through where the bathroom the master bedroom and the living room are would have been hold covered over for carrying goods and materials and this is it this is the boatman's cabin again as I say all original just as it would have been a hundred or more years ago these pictures on the wall here are of the family of the builders of this boat who themselves were working boat people the decorations are all that the boat people had and they were very proud of them the idea of the brass balls on the wall stems from the lady folk wanting to decorate the only living area they had and the only way they could do it because they were so poor was by going to a place that they used to call the bed hole it's where a factory that used to make brass beds had a dump where they cast all their mismate stuff off that and the fact that some of these bed knobs could be bought for cash and obviously the more bed knobs you had the more affluent you were this that my little television standing on at the moment is the stove which also has an oven this is what they used to cook on and the hob on top going up from there there's a panel with ticket drawer where they used to put orders and papers for the runs they used to do the control levers for the engine in the boat obviously horse brasses the little mirror and the table drawer together with its crumb drawer underneath and food storage cupboard this table door comes down and in here where we keep our paperwork would have been the tea and coffee and biscuits and so and this is the table that doubled as an ironing board where they used to sit and eat amazing really when you consider the size of this little area that all them people used to live in here this was the bed it folds across onto the seat opposite and then a mattress used to be put across it and a bed made up for the adults and then on the opposite side when they weren't sitting on them these seats used to be turned into beds for the children On 
underneath these panels where I'm standing now are the battery banks that supply the 12 volt electricity to the boat. This is also my little den. I uh, keep my PlayStation down here. And if the telly's a bit poor, I'll often come down here and spend an hour or two. But we do like to keep this part of the boat as original as possible. You'll notice that the woodwork down here is tongue and groove panelling and it's been what they call scumbled which is artificially wood grained a skill that's largely dying out now um, in the boat world and a lot of modern boats decide not to have this boatman's cabin frankly because they view it as a waste of space really um, and a lot of boatmen's cabins are turned into studies computer rooms and the like but uh, we like to think it's nice to keep it all original so that anybody visiting the boat can gasp some scope as, as to how families used to live well that's our little tour of the boat complete I hope you've enjoyed it and from me and Sandy it's goodbye for now <laughs>